there's a Mad Max video game. I did not know this until a couple of weeks ago when I started playing the game to make a video about it. Because, you know, Furiosa came out uh, a, while, a little while back. So I've been going through and I've been playing Mad Max video game. Uh, I've put in about 45 hours, played through the entire game and did pretty much everything um, except for, you know, a few scrap yards and whatnot. But um, I want to talk about what's it like playing the Mad Max video game from 2015 in 2024, nine years later. So let's talk about it. So the first thing I want to mention is when I bought the, so I first, I bought the game on PC. Okay. That's the first thing I want you guys to know. Uh, I bought it on PC and I had a little bit of trouble getting it started. And I, I it took me about half an hour because sometimes with, with, with video games, sometimes when you, um, when you launch it, it'll launch in like a smaller window and because it'll be like the wrong resolution or something. And so you have to go into the settings and then you have to adjust the resolution and whatnot to get it full screen. Um, so this, this, isn't, this isn't crazy or anything, but the problem I had was this really weird situation where when I go into settings, it didn't have any of the settings. This is a little weird, okay? And uh, for any of you PC players out there who are thinking about maybe looking at getting Mad Max for PC, I want you to know there is an easy fix for this, okay? It's not exactly the greatest fix, but you have to start the game and then once you once you get into the uh, once you get into the game and you can hit the pause button and then you can go into settings, then you can. And unfortunately, it, it gets really weird cuz like it it has the weirdest settings to start off with. Like the sound is turned off or for the uh, cinematic sound is turned off and there's just a bunch of really wild things that I just don't get, but you can go in through and correct it and then you can um, and then you can go in and restart and then watch the cinematic and you can actually hear it and everything like that. So um, th there is a little, there's a fix with that. But the reason, main reason I bring this up is because I started, I, I found out because I watched a YouTube video and I was, and I was like, there's a Mad Max game. Oh my gosh. And I was like, okay, so well, I definitely have to make a video about this. So um, I started off with some pretty high goodwill because it hurts positive things about it. But when that happened, my goodwill dropped to nothing. Like I was, I was like on that two hour mark, I was on the verge of like, do I really want to keep playing that? Because I was, I was like, ah. but here's the thing. The game won me over anyways. And that's, that's kind of the reason I wanted to bring all this up is because the game won me over in spite of that. I started, I went from decent high goodwill, went all the way down to zero, and it had to build that goodwill back up over my time playing the game. I did have some fun with this. I did enjoy it. This isn't like a crazy, wildly great game. It's got some problems with it, but it is definitely enjoyable. And if you, if, especially if you like... Mad Max Fury Road, um, or you know, watch you watch Furiosa, either of those, and you enjoyed that that, and you want some more in this Mad Max universe. This game is actually in this version, that version of the universe, with some nods to the original Mad Max movies. So let's talk about the story of the game. Now, there's not really too much crazy to go on with this uh, game. Uh, basically, Mad Max loses his his interceptor, and so then he. He ends up meeting uh, a hunchback named Chumbucket who wants to build a car. And so basically they want to get the stuff to build the car properly. That's, that's the majority of it. So um, I th there's a couple of things also I do want to mention about this because going a little bit deeper into it. Um, and this is, I'm going to say it's not really going to be too uh, spoilery or anything like that. I don't, I don't really think it's, this is too spoilery. Um, so... First of all, a couple of things I do want to mention. Uh, so you have, in you have Gas Town. So um, if you if you remember Fury Road, right? Um, you have the Citadel. You have you hear about Bullet Farm, and then you see Gas Town from a really far distance. Well, this takes place actually relatively close to Gas Town. Um, you don't have any of the really. It, it doesn't really match the topography of Fury Road and Furiosa. So it, it's it's like kind of. It's canon-ish, not canon, kind of, and it, it's, it's technically not canon, but for me, personally, I'm considering this to be canon because um, there's a lot of things that 
go into this, and especially since Furiosa came out, um, there are some things that have been confirmed to be canon from the game. And there's a good reason for that. Um, and that reason is because um, George Miller, who directed all the Mad Max movies, um, he worked, helped work on Mad Max, the video game. And also Furio Fur Furiosa's backstory was written before Mad Max, the game, or Mad Max Fury Road came out. So all of this was kind of done a long time ago, kind of in tandem together. So... Um, but yeah, so you, you've got you've got links like um, so you've got Scrotus. He is in charge of Gas Town, and he's also in Furiosa, which I thought was really cool. He's not in Mad Max Fury Road, but he is the son of Immortan Joe, and they use the War Boys and the Immortan Joe Signia uh, from the Citadel. They use all of that, the Thunder Poons, so that all that stuff is connected to like Fury Road and everything like that. So this obviously is supposed to be taking place in the same universe now. Things are a little weird, like with like how the topography is. Like it's unclear um, where exactly the set, like the triad of um, the Citadel, the uh, Gas Town, and Bullet Farm are. We don't know exactly where that is. We know that it's west of the Green. We know it's west of the Green Place, and the Green Place is shown in Furiosa to be like in slap dab in the middle of Australia. So we don't know exactly where. But in the video game, there are some bits that are in the sea and there are bits that are in land and there's even an airport. So it's really hard to tell exactly where any of this is. So you kind of have to take it for like a grain of salt. And also two characters from um, the video game show up in Furiosa and that would be Scrotus and what's believed to be Chumbucket. And of course, uh, Furio so I think that the video game takes place between Furiosa and Mad Max Fury Road, even though technically at the end um, is just before, like the very end of Furiosa is just before, is like the beginning-ish bits of Fury Road. Um, but there's a big gap between what kind of is the end of Furiosa story. Um, so there's just like a few years um, in, in there. And I believe that's where the Mad Max is, Mad Max game is. So for like canon and timeline, that's kind of how I'm, I'm seeing it. Um, I, as, as far as I can tell, it's not really canon. Um, the designs for Scrotus and Chumbucket are different. But also, something I also want to mention is that, um, so in, later in the game, um, there's a woman and a child that Mad Max helps, or at least tries to help, and they die. And that, I think, I think the little girl in Mad Max Fury Road is that one from the game. Max, is that you? Where were you? Where were you, Max? That's what I think. Now, again, not really canon. I don't know for sure, um, you know, if... There's a, there's a possibility. Um, I know George Miller, he wrote a Mad, like the year before, um, like a Mad Max movie of the year before Fury Road. Uh, it was kind of like a pre prequel for Mad Max. And so they might explain that then, but I don't know if they're actually gonna make that movie or not. So for me, my head canon is that, so it kind of all ties in together. And this is, to me, it's just, absolutely awesome that you see like all these little different things the video game also has references to the original movies um you have um him eating uh, you have mad max eating like out of dinky d uh food uh dog food cans and that's reference to the second movie where you see mad max eating out of a dog food can or um you also have a thunderdome in it you know so there's 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 a reference to be on thunderdome right there so it kind of ties all the movies in just kind of a little bit the game also gives you an explanation on why uh, you don't see scrotus in fury road if if the game takes place between furiosa and mad max fury road that there would be an explanation right there so it is it's kind of interesting how all that can be can be kind of uh looked at and everything with all the movies especially now that furiosa's out because like, cause before you just have Fury Road, it's like, okay, yeah, 
the Mad Max game could be taken could take place anytime before uh, Mad Max Fury Road, um, likely because uh, he loses Mad Max loses his interceptor. My guess is permanently, but you know his car's blown up several times before, so you know you, you never really know. But he has the interceptor in Mad Max and in Fury Road, he loses the interceptor. So we I would assume, you know, prequel. But now that Furiosa is out we can actually kind of see more of the pieces fit together. And it kind of feels like they have canonized a couple of video game only characters up until now in the movie universe. So is it canon? Is it not canon? Who knows? But I just find that really exciting. Um, the graphics for this game, it's 2015. So it's not like incredibly incredible, but it looks good. Honestly, um, I have no complaints here. Um, this game doesn't have anything that I would find to be abhorrent or anything like that. It definitely doesn't feel super dated or anything. So this game, granted, I'm not like going to be the best to be able to determine graphics and everything, but um, it does look, it maybe it looks a little dated, but like not anything that's going to be like, oh my gosh, it looks, it feels so dated, it feels so old. You know, it's nine years old, but like, there's no issues here. It's it doesn't look terrible in any sense. It looks good. It looks pretty good. Um, it looks as good as you could probably expect from a video game, to be honest. Um, except for nowadays when you got like Unreal Engine Five and it's like practically photorealistic. Um, but like for for video games, I mean, this looks about as good as you might want it to look. So. Um, and then another th um, another thing to mention um, is when you're driving around, you've got uh, Chum Bucket, the hunchback, on your car, on the back of your car, and that's uh, that's how you do a lot of bits of the car combat is because uh, Chum Bucket is kind of doing it for you. So when you're driving around, um, you're you know you can of course damage your car, but when you get out of the car, Chum Bucket just jumps over on the under the hood and he starts fixing the car for you. Um, you can also have him do it before you're even or when you're still in the car. Um, but the nice thing is, um, when you're driving around, this is probably one of the things that is probably the best I've seen with vehicles in any game I've played, um, is because a lot of times when you're playing a game and you're using a vehicle, a lot of times you can get stuck and you, in like, you know, you might just, you might have to just explode the car or whatever, or get out. Um, but this game won't really let you get fully stuck. I don't think th there's not a time when I ever got fully stuck because I was uh, granted there's a couple times where I got kind of stuck um, the, but I was able to get out of it. Um, it also won't explode the car and then leave you without a car. Um, so if your car is on the verge of explosion you either die because you're in the car and it explodes or you get out of the car in time because it gives you like a five second timer. Um, you get out of the car and then Chum Bucket goes and repairs it. So you're never really left with like, oh man, I need to get, uh, I need to get, you know, repairs or something like that to, to fix it. Um, so you can, you can kind of drive recklessly and then just have Chum Bucket go and repair your car and you're, you're all good. It's great. Love that aspect of it. Um, and also he, he kind of is very talkative, um, but it was a little annoying at the beginning, but after a while, it just kind of felt like he was just your, uh, your, he was just your personal hype man. And it was fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed having Chum Bucket on there. So, um, the combat is going to be something a little bit more akin to, uh, the Arkham series, um, where you're basically, it's not quite a free flow combat like you have in the Arkham series, but it's going to be more of like a, um, you, you have one button to hit and then you have one button to parry and then you have um, maybe some combos that you can mix in there as well. Um, you do have a gun. Now you don't get unlimited ammo in this. Um, you start off, I think with uh, one, you have a shotgun that has one barrel and you have two extras that you can have. So you can have a total of three shots and that's how many you can hold at once. That's starting off. Now by the end of the game, you can hold 11 shots, but this kind of makes it so that you're not, um, you're not shooting people all the time. You got to be careful and you got to conserve your ammunition. Got to use it really only when necessary. Um, and sometimes it is necessary. So um, like when you have like war criers and you're like, you're going to want to get rid of those guys. So 
you go ahead and, and like you got to save those shots to make sure you have you know what you need and especially early on in the game um it feels kind of like a survival game early on where you got to you got to Find, get water whenever you can. You got to, you know, find that food. Uh, I spent a good chunk of my, um, the first few hours of gameplay, sp like on very, like very low health. Um, probably about a quarter health is what I was spending it because whenever I could get water, um, I would drink it and then I'd be out, you know, or if I'd get in a combat situation, I'd be left with low health and no way to revive myself because you're only allowed to carry a little bit of water. You're only allowed to, uh, you're not allowed to carry any food. And so your, your on-person resources are very low. And as you progress through the game, you can add more to that, but you can't add water. And it gets a little, maybe a little frustrating because your water stays the same, but your health can go up. So the, it, kind of, it kind of feels like a bit of a survival game at first, but as you upgrade uh, some of the fortresses, you can go in and um, get some of that stuff like automatically added to whenever you go to that fortress. And then it starts, you start feeling better about, you know, engaging in combat and everything like that. So I think the main thing with progression in this game is going to be your vehicle progression. Um, it's going to be, so you, you have, it's kind of like an RPG for vehicle, you know, a vehicle RPG kind of, um, where you, you know, you choose, okay, you know, like, what do you want to add? And, um, you know, you have things like armor that um, will increase your armor, but the, the bigger the armor is, the um, more it's going to reduce your acceleration and your handling. So then you got to upgrade some of those, you know, things that increase those. Um, so it's kind of a bit, kind of a little bit of a juggle, you know, to kind of make sure you get everything. If you want your defenses high, but you also want to be able to go fast and everything like that. So that was, that was pretty fun. I enjoyed that bit, those bits of it. Um, the open world is meh. It's not really anything wild or crazy great. It's, it's kind of like the most basic, um, I guess what you could call Ubisoft design, where there's just a bunch of things out there, and then you gotta go, you just gotta do, you do a bunch of things that, they, you know, they'll introduce a few different things. And it's something that they've complained about. Um, I know, I've heard people complain about, like, with Spider-Man and all, a bunch of other games. Um, where there's just like, here are some checklist items you gotta take care of. And personally, not really that annoyed by that kind of thing. Um, you know, like, it's like, okay, you know, here, here's some things that you can do. And it's like, okay. Um, some of them get harder in certain areas um, where things aren't, you know, taken off as, um, as easily as, um, you know, in, in like earlier areas, later areas. So you've got things like scarecrows and you can see it on the screen now. And um, some, like some of the earlier ones, you can just ram straight through it. And some of the later ones, you gotta have like super upgraded harpoon, you know, max, maxed out harpoon to be able to take them out. But also with character upgrades, um, they'll have like these little uh, challenges that you have to complete. And it's it's not anything like, it's like just things that, you know, little challenges that they have that you'll just do as you're playing the game. And uh, you'll get things called Griffa tokens and you'll um, you'll end up meeting this guy called a Griffa, or Griffa, I guess. Um, and he'll give you upgrades and whatnot. And they kind of have more of a progression story arc um, with him uh, as, as you go through and you play the game. So that's pretty cool. I enjoyed that, you know. Um, that was kind of your main character progression was with this guy. Um, and then also, you're, uh, you, instead of like climbing up a tower and, you know, looking out, um, you actually go into a balloon, which is not always easy, not always the easiest to figure out how to do that. Um, but uh, once, you, once you get up into the balloon, you actually, it doesn't automatically just show everything around you. It actually only, like, you have to use your binoculars and look around, and you might not catch everything. And so not everything is, so that, that might be considered a good thing or a bad thing. Depends on how you see it. Depends on how you like to play. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is the controls. Um, the controls, I can't say they're outdated, just because there, there are some design, it's just, it's design decisions. Um, the controls aren't fantastic. Um, it has you dodging with RB um, on an Xbox controller, or I guess R1 if you're on a PlayStation controller, or you'll press B or 
circle to shoot, which doesn't make a lot of sense. The good news is, is in the settings, they actually have a, you can inverse those. Um, so you can dodge with B and RB to uh, shoot. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, also, the jump button is the left trigger. I didn't realize this. I don't, I don't think it tells you. This game isn't fantastic about telling you things or communicating th uh, things to you. Um, like for instance, you'll have storms that roll in. Not fantastic at communicating that. Cause to me, at first I was just like, these things are just annoying. What's the point? And then I found out later that um, that there's treasure, you know, in the middle of that. So you can you can dr you can brave the storm. You can drive into the storm, or you can go to a friendly camp and you can avoid the storm. It's kind of your choice. Um, at first. Didn't really know that, so it wasn't really fantastic, but it's a pretty enjoyable game. Um, overall, it's a pretty enjoyable game. I liked it. I put in 45 hours, which there's a bunch of games that I also re I, I really loved more than this game that I put in a little bit less time. So um, definitely definitely worth a shot. Um, it's, I think, undiscounted. Uh, I bought 20 bucks undiscounted. So, you know, that's what the retail price is going for now. Um, you can get it on PlayStation or Steam, and um, it works well. It still plays well, um, you know, once you get used to some of the controls, you know. But overall, this is a good game. Not my favorite. Not really my top tier. This is, like, if you're a Mad Max fan, this is definitely worth checking out. Um, it's definitely worth the time to put into it. Um, it's not, the, like, I'd say probably B. I'd say probably like a B is probably what I'd put this at. Um, so it's not amazing top tier, you know, like S or A tier. I'd say this is more B tier, solid, definitely worth it, especially since it's 20 bucks. You know, it's not 60 bucks anymore. Um, so if you haven't, if you didn't know about this game, if you haven't played this game and you're a fan of Mad Max, go ahead and check this game out. Definitely worth it. And if you've played the game, tell me what you think in the comments down below. And if you liked this video, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you want to see more reviews like this, uh, go ahead and hit subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.